Hey guys, I was recently visiting with a friend who uh, wants to improve some of his processes and his scheduling and, and you know control of his inventory and that sort of thing. And uh, his, this company is not in a position to invest a lot of money in a large MRP system and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of guiding him along the process. And I start off by telling him, Chris, put everything in Excel, right? And I gave him some instructions, and I preach that. I tell everybody, put everything everything in Excel. And now I'm going to show you guys what I mean by that. So what I'm going to try to do here is I am going to try to create the simplest scheduling system I can as quickly as possible to give you guys an idea of how beneficial it can be to put things in tables and how that can start being built upon to improve your scheduling and that sort of thing. So uh, let's just do this thing, all right? First thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create. Notice, by the way, this this here is going to be directed more to supervisors and managers and that sort of things, guys who are who have access to uh, computers at their workplace for uh, improving their places. This is not generally going to be geared towards operators, okay? So here you go, managers. Notice that my desktop is clear, okay? I don't have a bunch of stuff on there. I've heard people say, "Oh, uh, you know, the uh, an organized desk is a sign of a of a sick mind or something like that," and that's not true. A disorganized desk is inefficient. You should treat the desktop of your computer like you do your desktop of your desk. They should both be absolutely spick and span and organized. Enough about that. So, but because I'm working at my desk now, I'm going to start this by creating a folder. And, uh, whoops, yep, sorry, let me rename that thing to uh, scheduling, okay? All right, we're going to work inside that thing, and we're going to create a new uh, Excel worksheet called scheduling, all right? Whoops, okay, let's open that bad boy up now. Uh, one of the things he's doing, my friend is doing, is putting in substrates in uh, a spreadsheet, right? So we're going to rename this tab, and we're going to call this substrates. And then up here, we're going to say, uh, well, each substrate has an ID, right? A unique ID, and that could be your internal number or the vendor's number. And then uh, let's just say, keep it simple, the, we want to know the color of the material, and the width of the material, right? And I know that we could, you know, put uh, a lot more about the qualities and the type of adhesive that I might use and that sort of thing. And by the way, I'm going to do something here for narrow web labels, okay? I can make one of these for wide web too, but I'm just because my friend is in a narrow web, I want to do one in narrow web so he can see this. So let's, uh, we're going to use ID and and for substrate, we'll just say that, uh, that we'll, we'll create a placeholder. Substrate is uh, substrate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, S, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's his ID number. Happens to be white. And the width is uh, 6.5 inches. Okay, 6.5 inches. All right. So there we have now a substrate table. And, of course, down here you could have all kinds of ID numbers corresponding to different colors and widths and perhaps adhesive types, lining thickness, and so on and so forth. But we're going to keep it simple, all right? Now, another table I like to uh, use is a die table. Okay, so we're going to create a table here called a die. And uh, so what does a die have? It has an ID number. It has a shape, right? Uh, it could be a circle, it could be a rectangle, it has a width, well the uh, the shape has a width, right, and the uh, shape has a height, let's say, and the shape has a radius, sometimes, if it's a square or circle or uh, a rectangle, it might have radiuses in the corners, it has a gap or a cavity, whatever you want to call it, and it has a certain number of teeth, right? Now, if you were setting up a table for something like some out-of-the-box MRP systems that you can buy, you'd be surprised at the amount of detail you'd need to populate here. 
So even just starting off like this is better than not having this at all. Okay, guys? All right, so now we've got substrates. We've got dyes. That's plural. Rename dyes. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's create one that I'm going to call structure. Okay, this is how a given product or SKU, or whatever you want to call it, um, is built. Structure. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to have here, and it'll start to come together, is let's say we have an SKU number for a given product that we sell, right? And then that particular SKU corresponds more than likely to one unique customer. It's printed on a certain substrate, right? Uh, and then I'm going to put something in here that there's a certain amount of feet per label, okay? And I'll show you why I do that later on. <laughs> then let's just make this a four color press, okay? So there'll be color one, and that color will be printed with analogs one, okay? And uh, so then we'll just make a four color press here. All right. And then um, uh, well, let's have a run rate, okay? A rate that this thing runs at, and we'll see why that do that later on. And then the die that that corresponds to this particular job, okay? And uh, so uh, let's say the SKU is label zero 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 zero, zero one, okay? And the uh, customer is uh, X Y Z uh, X Y Z bottling, okay. And the substrate is uh, we'll call it S one two three four five, like that substrate we had on the other sheet. Yep, S one two three four five. The feet per label, let's say it's uh, point one two five. In other words, it takes eight labels to make one foot of substrate. Okay, so for a number, if you know the number of labels you need, it'll automatically calculate the amount of substrate. We can make it do that. All right, so let's say color one. This is not a process printing job or press. It's just a four color press. So we're going to say color one is, uh, we're going to say uh, white, right? And analogs, we're going to say 250. We'll keep it simple. That could be the serial number or something. Color two is uh, 185 red, and analogs uh, two is 360, right? Color three is 286 blue, and analogs three will be uh, 400 line, right? And then um, finally, uh, color four is black. A little bit of line work there, and we'll say analogs four is. Uh, 440 okay and let's say that we're running at a rate of uh, this job tends to run at a rate of 300 feet per minute okay and it uses die number uh, D one two three four we'll just say that's a die number that we have here okay so let's see what dies we have let's put a D one two three four there the shape let's call it a square the width, let's call it 2.875. The height, let's call it 2.875. The radius, let's say it's a quarter inch radius. The gap, let's call it 0.125. And the number of teeth, uh, let's say it's 96 teeth. All right? Because if you got, uh, the height is 2.75. And you've got a radius, uh, not a radius, sorry, a gap of one eighth. That's a three inch. Let's say it's four around. Let's say number around. It's four. The number of teeth for three inches. So for that would be uh, 96 teeth. Okay. Four around, three inches. 96 teeth. Let me let me make sure that's right. Four times three equals twelve times eight equals ninety six. Right. Okay. So ninety six teeth. All right, guys. So this is a sample die that correlates to this die here, and this substrate. Uh, let's see. Should have 
Ah, different. So let's change the substrate. You know, let me see. Where's the substrate? Okay, we got S1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's good. And the SKU is L000001. All right. So now we've got three tables laid out here so far. Okay. Uh, well, there might be one other one. Let's put, uh, let's do this. Let's put an orders table, okay, here, because we're going to make this thing spit out orders for us real easy. Rename that. Orders. All right, so I'll put that here. And an order number, right? An order is going to have an order number. So we'll say the order number here. Uh, we're going to have a quantity, right? And we're going to have a due date. Okay, so that's all we want to input for an order once we have the other stuff set up. Okay, make life easy for us, all right? All right, save that. All right, so now let's uh, let's say this is order number 001. Uh, let's not even do that. Let's do an order number 1, 2, 3, make life easy. The quantity on this is 100,000. And the due date is uh, June 5th, 2000. Uh, Let's format that column. Whoops. To uh, just uh, general. Let's do text. Oh, let's do date. All right. 6 5 2012. So this is order number 1, 2, 3. It has a quantity of 100,000. And the due date is 6 5 2012. Okay. We have a product structure set up in here. This is a, a product. It's for this customer. It uses this substrate. This is how many feet per label it, it uh, um, you know, this uh, product consumes. This is the co first color and first analog, second color, second analog, and all the way through fourth. The rate of 300 feet per minute and the die number. So we have a die table. That's die one D one two three four. We have a die table D one two three four. It's squared. Its width is two and seven eighths inches. Its height is two and seven eighths inches. The radius of the corners is a quarter inch. The gap is uh, one eighth inch between the dies and stuff like that. The number of round is four, and the number of teeth on that die is ninety six. And the substrate is S one two three four five. The color is white, and the color is six point five. Now, of course, we would have a full list of substrates here, a full list of dies here. We would have a full list of product structures here. And uh, we'd have all of the orders open that we'd have would be on this list here, right? So that's all we need. Now, we would have other tables and stuff, but I'm making the simplest system I can, all right? Save that. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this folder. Let me close this thing here. So now I have that scheduling spreadsheet. Now I'm going to create a new... Microsoft Access Database thing, and I'm going to call it Scheduling uh, Scheduling also, okay? So now I'm working in Microsoft Access. So let's open that thing up. I uh, forget that. All right, so now what we want to do is uh, we want to... Uh, I'm going to link to these tables. All right, so the first table I'm linking to is uh, is uh, substrates. First row contains column headings. Yep. Yep. Good. Finish that. Good. No errors. Okay. Let me continue linking these bad boys up. And I know this stuff ain't exciting, guys, but this is the way it happens. So uh, uh, just watch it happen, and you'll see it can happen. You can do it yourself. I think this is worth it. A lot of you guys are going to benefit from this. Okay, so now we've got the four tables linked up, right? You see my die there? Uh, the same thing with, you know, the orders table. Same thing with the structure, and I'm just linked to Excel. This data is not actually an access. I'm just linking to it so I can work in that Excel spreadsheet, which is easier to work with, okay? So now I have those four things in there, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a query, okay? So I'm going to create a query in design view. I'm going to put all of these tables here, 
Okay. And let's see if this works. Okay. So here's my substrates. Here's my uh, structures. The orders, the dies. Okay, so I'm going to put this like this. I'm going to put structure there. Uh, I'm going to put substrates here and dies over here. All right. So let's see. I'm going to say by order number, I want you to pull out. Uh, well, let me link. Uh, hmm. That table needs to have an SKU. Let me save this and say or orders. Uh, work orders. I'm going to call this work orders. Okay, I'm going to save this. I'm going to. Uh, Close this for now so I can get in this thing and I'm going to add to orders. I need to have an ID number. That's the order number, but I need a product ID, right? An SKU number. And in this example, the SKU number I'm going to use is L000001, L1234511, okay, now I got that. Save that. Close that. Let's go back into access. Ah, let me do that again. So now let's see uh, the query again, work orders. Now we have an SKU, okay? So that gives us this to tie it to that there. And then uh, for the substrate, let's see, the substrate should tie it to that ID number. And then for the dies, the dies should tie to that ID number, okay? So that'll help pull the data out. So now we have a number here, and then we're going to take all of this stuff here, pull that. We're going to take the color and the width of the substrate, uh, put it right here, and we're going to take the shape, let me grab this, and all this stuff about the die, we're going to drag that bad, whoops, we'll drag it right there. Save that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now... When we have an order, we know that it's SKU is this, the customer is XYZ bottling, the substrates are one, two, three, four, five, that's the number. The color is white, it's six and a half inches wide, it's one, uh, 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 one eighth of a foot per label. The color, first color is uh, white, first analogs, second color, second analogs, third color, third analogs, fourth color, fourth analogs. And uh, the run rate, the die number, the shape of the die, the die's width, die width, uh, height, radius, gap, number of round, number of teeth, right? So we've got all that beautiful information just from this query right here.